Hello, and welcome to Grow A Lot More. We have uh, a bird box here, which is now uh, not being used. I can tell that because of the cobwebs inside. But it's really important that you only take these down during certain times of the year. So it's between sort of autumn through the winter time. Um, and it's because they're protected by the RSPB. Uh, I'm just gonna undo the screws because what I want to do is I just want to open this up so I can clean it out because birds like to build their own nests. Um, you can leave them but you'll find that the birds will do more work to remove the previous nest um, so they can build their own. So it's well worth uh, helping them out if possible. So I'm just going to open this up. And oh, there is a nest in there. I think this was blue tits um, last year, but we have got a spider's nest in here. So I'll look to remove all of that and clean that out so that it's ready for springtime. So while I do that, um, let's have a look to see what's coming up in today's program. In today's episode, we'll be looking at pests and disease. We'll be looking at planting some garlic. We'll be looking at what flowers there are in October, what there is to harvest, and what there is to sow and grow. We'll also be looking at how to create your own leaf mould and also any jobs to do at this time of year. Perfect time of the year to start harvesting your carrots. However, we've had a really annoying pest this year that's managed to get underneath the netting um, and lay its eggs into our carrot. And that's uh, carrot root fly. And they lay the eggs just on the tops of the carrots and then the maggots eat the carrot from the inside out. Um, and you'll notice little black lines going all the way around and potentially even through the carrot. And that is unfortunately carrot root fly. Um, and, oh, that's a decent sized carrot, um, but as you can see, it's been attacked around the top here. Um, you might be able to salvage some of it, however, it, it probably isn't going to um, be very nice. So this won't be wasted, uh, this will be fed to our chickens and I'm sure they'll absolutely love it, and especially the carrot tops. So that's one particular annoying pest at this time of the year. Let's have a look at some others. Now's the perfect time to start thinking about planting out onion sets and garlic. You can either do this in autumn or you can do it in early spring. I like to do mine in uh, autumn because the soil's really nice and warm and it gives the 
sets the ability to be able to grow a nice root stock before the growing season in spring. I'm going to be doing some rows. You don't have to do rows. Um, I just like to because just be, you can just keep on top of things like weeds a little bit easier. I can now start to think about where I would like to plant my sets. And I've got these rebar bars that I use to give myself a straight line. You can use a string or just do it by eye. And I've got some different varieties here. So garlic, I've got Marco, which is a soft neck variety. Um, and I have got hard neck varieties as well, um, but not currently here today. I'll be doing those uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And what you want to do is you want to just break the cloves off of the main bulb. Remove as much paper as possible off the outside. That will prevent any rotting around it. And then you have something called the base, so that's where the roots come from. And you've got the point, so that's where the stem comes from. So when you plant these, you want to make sure that that base is firmly into the ground. I have a couple of different ways that I do garlic. You can either use um, a little trowel um, or something called a dibber. This was actually made out of a broken chair leg, um, but it works really well. So just be careful on the ground as you don't want to compact it. And then just push your dibber in and you want it about two times the height of your clove and then push that down ensuring that the base is on the bottom. I always like to leave the hole open so I can see exactly where I've planted it rather than covering it over because you need about 10 to 15 centimeters apart and again push that down and then just work all the way along. Now once you've done that, just rake back over the top and then just make sure you place a label so you know exactly what they are and what variety you've sown. We're still getting flowers at this time of the year for some lovely autumn colour and this is no exception. This is Joey Joshua and it produced lovely large dahlia heads. Once it hits the first frost though in November they'll die off and we'll cut them back down and then we'll save the tubers for next year. So this is one thing that's flowering at this time of the year. Let's have a look at some more.
and here we are to one of the most famous things to harvest in October. So this is one of our pumpkins. It was actually supposed to be jack-o'-lantern, however, um, it certainly isn't. But it is an eating variety, um, and I can't actually remember what sort this was. So, but um, we're going to harvest this now because it's nice and orange, and it's got a really hard outer skin. Um, the reason why it's gone orange is because it's got a lot of sun on it, and if you want them to ripen at this time of the year, just remove some leaves or anything which is casting any shade um, and allow the sun to hit them and they'll turn hard um, so they'll store really well. The other thing just to bear in mind about storage is um, you've got the stalk coming just off of the stem and you want to keep that stalk on so that means it will store better and that'll be really good for your harvest. So just put that into store, it should last for about a month to two months or even three. So, But this is one thing that you can harvest now in October, let's have a look at some more. Now a good time to start thinking about sowing and growing your broad beans. Uh, we have a variety here called Aquadulce. Um, it's a really good variety to plant now over winter and you'll get a crop early springtime. Um, and I've got a really nice fine tilth to this soil. It's free draining. Um, and it's had quite a bit of organic matter added to it over the last few weeks. So it's perfectly ready um, to sow into. And I've got a couple of pieces of tools. So I've got my dibber here and I've just used the rake just to get a nice flat surface. I'm also going to use that as a guide to where to sow my seeds. You can also sow certain types of pea during this time of the year. Um, there's a good variety called Meteor, which is a good winter variety. Um, and I would also advise that you do these in pots as well, uh, ready to plant out in springtime. So I'm just going to create a furrow, just so I know where the line is. And I'm going to just use my dibber, like what I did with the garlic. I'm going to separate them about 10 to 15 centimetres apart. So there are a couple of things that you can sow and grow at this time of the year. Let's have a look at some more.
creating leaf mould, one of my favourite jobs to do in autumn. And I've got a variety of leaves here. It's predominantly oak and beech leaves. Um, the reason why I've specifically targeted these is because they break down really well and they give you a really good leaf mould. These will typically break down in about 12 to 24 months, um, which means that I can use it next year. And it's a really good soil conditioner. But you can also use it as a seed compost. You do have to be careful of pollutants, things like plastics, uh, and potentially where you, you harvest your leaves from. Uh, I'm quite fortunate as we have an estate next door, um, and that's where I've got mine from today. However, I want to make sure that this is ready for next year. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to break down the larger leaves into smaller pieces. Now you can mow them, um, however I quite like to trim them as it's quite quick and easy. And um, what I've done is I've built a, a, um, a tub, uh, it's a water, water tub, and I've taken off the top and I've taken off the bottom so the water then can permeate through so we don't end up with a really sludgy mix. And I've created a lid with a hole in, so what I can do is I can just put my strimmer in through the hole, so as I start strimming, the leaves don't go everywhere. There we are. Perfect. So the leaves now have broken down into really small pieces will accelerate the breaking down process and create leaf mould a lot quicker. So, but if it's quite dry like these leaves were, you just need to add a little bit of moisture to it just so that the bacteria can break it down even quicker. And then it's just like layering a cake. So you put your next lot of dry leaves on, trim those down to small pieces, add a little bit of water and then repeat the process. And you'll find that in about a week to two weeks time, um, the barrel that was full has reduced by half, uh, but maybe even by three quarters. And that's just where the leaves have started to settle and break down. So what you do then is you just keep on adding. So keep putting layers and layers and layers until you've got a full barrel towards the end of the season. And then hopefully in about 12 to 24 months, you'll have a really nice batch of leaf mould. here we are in the greenhouse and as you can see we've taken out all of the tomato plants and um, we're starting to tidy up and get ready for next year. So it's really important that you wash down your greenhouse or polytunnel so that it prevents disease spreading into next year's crops. So I've just got a bucket for safety water and I'm going to be running that across the walls and giving my greenhouse a general tidy up. So this is one job that you can be getting on with in October, but let's have a look at some others. It's a good time to start to plant out things like daffodils, alliums and crocuses. Leave tulips until later on in the season. Pull up any weeds now as this will help in the long run. You can prune pepper plants now to try and keep them for next year. There's plenty of brown and green waste at this time of the year, so make sure that it goes on the compost heap. 
plant out overwintering onion sets. It's a good idea to put your citrus trees back into greenhouses and ensure to prune them and feed them. Cover over any brassica family plants like Brussels sprouts to prevent any damage from birds. Continue to harvest as much as you can. It's difficult, but still try and keep on top of maintenance around your plot. Take hardwood cuttings of fruit bushes like red currants and black currants. Ensure to collect leaves for leaf mould. Any onions or garlic that you've stored and dried out, it's now a good time to bring them indoors. Now these runner beans have done really well. These are called Lady Die. However, they've certainly gone over and died, um, so they're gonna need to be removed. So I'm just gonna cut them down at the base. But first of all, I'm gonna be harvesting some of their beans that have left on, and they formed brown cases. And inside here are dry beans, and they're gonna be used as my seed crop for next year. So this is going to take me a little while, so I'm going to leave you for today. But thank you very much for joining us at Grow A Lot More. And if you'd like to subscribe, then please do. We are on all different types of social media, so you can follow us through those mediums as well. But thank you very much for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you again in November.